In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, good morning. Hope you are all doing well. Dear friends, today we are remembering a saint called Eusebius of Cremona, who lived in the uh, uh, 4th century, late 4th century. And he was a monk, an abbot. And a special uh, mention about this particular saint is that he convinced the Pope of the day, uh, Saint Athanasius, uh, to, sorry, Saint Anastasius, to condemn the teachings of Origen. Origen lived in the late 2nd, early 3rd century. And uh, he, uh, in his teachings, he was a very uh, dedicated preacher teacher of the Christian faith, but there were so many wrong elements in his teaching. Uh, to list a few, he sort of laid the seed for the Arian heresy, uh, which uh, plagued the world for about 300 years almost, uh, by his teaching that the son was not equal to the father, that the son was inferior to the fa father. Other, another uh, of his wrong teaching, non-orthodox teaching, is... Uh, that uh, even Satan would eventually repent and uh, is teaching that uh, uh, there wouldn't be hell, apocatastasis. Um, that is another something which is not orthodox in his teaching. Likewise, uh, he also does not uh, hold on to the orthodox view that the human soul is created along with the body at the time of uh, the child being conceived in the womb. That's the orthodox position. But he say, he sort of held the view that the souls were all created in the beginning itself of creation. There's a world, uh, souls. Um, and from that, um, as, uh, as and when time appears, uh, some of those souls become human beings. That sort of wrong teaching also he had. So he had many, many wrong teachings. Um, and, uh, and so... Um, Today's saint, Saint Eusebius, wanted his teachings to be condemned. It's not so much condemning this person. The person has to be forgiven. But it is his teaching because that can make an impact on other people as it did with Arius and uh, caused a lot of uh, problem for, to the church for 300 years. And so the teaching definitely needs to be condemned. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but then the person should not be condemned. He should be forgiven. Now, if that is the case for a sort of a sort of structural sins like this, uh, it is even more so for personal sins that people co commit against us. We have to forgive them. Now, why do we have to forgive? Now, we can say one reason is because if you forgive, then we are at inner peace. If you hold on, then we lose our peace and we are not able to progress in life. So that's one reason that you can say. Another reason is because um, the Lord stipulates the father stipulates that only if we forgive others uh, uh, he can forgive he will forgive us uh, that sort of a stipulation a precondition a prerequisite for us to be forgiven now this you can say is true even if others have committed greater evil to us and what uh, evil that we have committed is much smaller still because god will forget forgive a small sin only be only if we forgive the great sin of the others and so we have to forgive you can think like that but the real reason why we have to forgive is because the evil that others do to us is nothing in comparison to what we have done to god the evil that we have done against god the sin that we have done against god it's nothing others sins against us is nothing in comparison to what we have done against god that's the basic uh, truth that is taught by today's parable where the person is hugely indebted and the landowner completely forgives him and he goes and throttles another fellow worker who is uh, uh, borrowed a small pittance from him um, and uh, that is why we have to forgive what we have committed is much much more grave than what others have committed against us so what we need to realize is our sinfulness as we here in today's first reading, where the people of uh, Israel, the people of Judah repent that they have committed sin. That is the realization, not really pointing out at other people's sins, but our sins, firstly, first and foremost, and hence forgiving others 
their sins and running to God to ask for our forgiveness. Heavenly Father, help us to realize that we have to forgive others to be forgiven by you because the sins that others have committed against us is nothing compared to the great sins that we have committed against you. Help us to realize this truth and hence forgive others and run to you for, for forgiveness of our own sins. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen.